This is a message to Americans. The 24-hour news channels are drowning us in bad news. But the reality is we're just face down in a puddle. It looks like we're submerged. Stand up. We tower over the obstacles ahead of us. We were born for this moment. Like all the peoples of the earth, we stand on the shoulders of giants. The authors of democracy. Generations of fearless human rights leaders. Saints and messengers who devoted their lives toward the hope of an advanced society. They gave our generation a world more compassionate, more just, and more aware than the one that they had. And they gave us a job to do. How are we going to honor our responsibility? The 92 million of us who did not vote in 2016 have really good reasons. The system's rigged. Politicians don't show up for us, so why should we for them? And there's no denying that our so-called representatives are nearly all owned by those that finance their campaigns. We can see the disastrous results. They stumble just to address the needs of our cities and our countryside at the same time. They lack the strength to ensure the integrity of basic public safety and health care. They spectacularly fail to use our practically limitless wealth for what it's there for. The people, our children, their educations, meaningful jobs, basic housing, stuff a kindergartner knows. Because behind closed doors, we know the majority pledge their fealty to Wall Street lords handing over whatever's asked, which is all our land, all our wealth, all our power, along with their integrity. The reality is there's nobody out there who really represents us, other than us. It's we who bear sole responsibility to get our legislators on their feet, to give them their strength and their moral clarity. The 92 million who don't show up to the polls have been convinced, quite purposefully, that elections are about the candidates. They are not. Elections are about us. This one in November is about whether or not we choose to continue to advance toward democracy, or if we don't care, we'd prefer to be ruled by drooling barbarians. The opposition to corruption in government is obviously not one of the two billionaire-backed political parties. It's the people. The authority in the United States is not a president, nor the Congress. We are the authority. And November 3rd is one exercise of that authority, an authority that lasts all year round. And despite what reality show television force feeds us between the pharmaceutical and SUV ads and the graphics packages selling the apocalypse, the November election isn't the point. It isn't a period at the end of a sentence, it's just a comma. A comma that marks what came before and what will come next. Every time we exercise our authority over our democracy, we strengthen our ownership over this country, which desperately needs professional oversight. This November vote isn't about which one of two families lives in the White House. It's an exercise in our authority over every representative running down ballot and real decisions from decriminalizing drugs to creating an energy grid that doesn't torch our atmosphere. When we elect qualified judges and prosecutors of integrity, we can stop wrongful convictions. When we elect accountable mayors and council members, we can stop military SWAT teams from home invasions and killing people over made-up drug crimes. And if we do this consistently over time, we're going to end the war on drugs, centuries of racial terrorism, and the hunting of poor people for profit and the egos of tiny men. We know that corporations treat elections like a game, betting on all the outcomes. But there are candidates who don't take money from corporations. You should find out who they are. You've been told that they don't represent everything that you agree with. I ask you to check the source. And remember that when we vote them in, we reduce the oil and banking industry stranglehold over our lives. Some votes are a game of chess. Some are a long game. Those in power love it when we lose sight of that big picture. We don't like the candidates, so we forfeit. We just stay home, give up without a fight, give away our authority. Which is a real shame. 
because there is such a tiny number of people who actually control the country and have always controlled the country. They know very well that despite all the crazy headlines, the system is working really well. Have you seen the stock market lately? While millions of Americans are in crisis, Wall Street just had its best August in over 30 years. They printed more money in June alone than in the first two centuries after our founding. And they gave it all to themselves. Notice the headlines don't focus on that. Or on us. On our massive power. On our maturity. On our civility. On our love and compassion that we have for one another. They'd rather we stay focused on crude tweets and whatever the daily outrage is that we can find. As long as we keep clicking and buying and watching, they don't want us inspired. They don't want us excited about substantive policy positions. They'd rather we were distracted and divided, disgusted and discouraged. Why else would they cover politics like a gossip show? He said what? And then what did she say? Turning off 92 million of us. I'd say the agenda is pretty clear. They'd prefer it if we didn't vote at all. The Neanderthals in power have certainly taken enough brazen steps at this point to make that abundantly clear. Their latest ad campaign, written by a nine-year-old, claims universal voting is a fraud. We've never been subjected to more double-speak, gaslighting nonsense in our lives. And that's the best they got. Well, I don't know about you, but I once stood in line for 20 hours for Iron Maiden tickets. I think I can wait in a long line. I can fill out some extra forms. I can turn my computer on again and check my registration a few more times. And I can certainly stand in one spot all day long with a triple face mask because that's my job as a boss of the country. Whatever we have to do for our democracy is guaranteed to be a whole lot easier than what those giants whose shoulders we stand on endured. So that our black sisters and brothers our native mothers and fathers, our daughters and sons who were not born into wealth, for all of us to have a chance at ruling our own country, to bring healing, imagination, progress, and the nuance and compassion of adult supervision to this blood-stained land that we've been called and created to turn into a proving ground for what kind of creature we are, human being or monster? Are we going to leave air and water for our grandchildren or not? This is a message to Americans. Every one of the crises that have blown up in the last four years, the murder and abuse of black men and women, of women, of our healthcare workers, the suicidal assault on our global temperature, the anti-science narcissism, the shameless corruption, and the incessant fueling of hatred for our own human family. None of this is four years old. This is how the aristocracies built their fortunes for the last 400 years. And that's why they prefer our enthusiasm be tempered. They've always known, with the slightest spark of real passion and inspiration, their complete control over the government would disappear like that. Well, it's time to light the spark. And light it now before the last ember of reason burns out. Invite every member of your community, of your family, to claim the mantle of authority that we were born with, that we inherited from our ancestors, that we were clearly endowed with by our Creator, an authority whose purpose has always been known to create a more peaceful, just, and advanced society. Let's give the White House, the Congress, the commercial media, the owners of the social networks, and most of all their sponsors, a show of force this November 3rd that they cannot and will not be able to ignore. A comma, demonstrating our authority, one that we will continue to wield in the days and weeks and years ahead. May November the 3rd be a landslide victory for us. You know it terrifies them how easy this is. Because all we have to do is show up.